Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. This is Megan. And on this enthusiastic episode, we're going to talk about something that I'm surprised we never have talked about before. But yeah. I would say it's not associated in the paranormal world because it is around it. More associated with aliens than anything. But today we're talking about pyramids. Yeah, and I'm surprised that like like it's not talked about a lot more just because I would assume even if you take away the alien side of things, you take away the idea that they could be healing centers, the energy there has got to be absolutely massive because, I mean, there's obviously probably constructing them. There probably was deaths. Just the significance, that's what we'll get into a little bit in this episode multiple different cultures around the world in multiple different like time periods had such importance with these pyramids and you would think i don't know you would think well i'm pretty sure you can't probably investigate a pyramid but no but many have tried i bet there's been people that's tried i don't know how i would feel about that but first yes haunted update yes So we are, we can actually give you a haunted update. We scouted some places and it was actually on a whim. Like we had been talking about this for a while um, because mainly with the team we've been staying in like the Moorhead City area. And then we decided because we actually live in Jacksonville, Mike and Megan live like closer to the beach in Newport. And so we were thinking to stay this, that stay over here and figure out if there's anything over here you know going on forums and facebook pages and stuff like that there's a lot of stories especially we did an episode on haunted camp lejeune around that area so we started venturing out to see on our end without having mike and megan because it's about what like a 45 minute ride yeah we started venturing out our area and funny enough we got like an influx of people that messaged us about like an influx of people that message us about like crazy things that they've felt and and heard stories of and stuff like that in our area. So we were like, you know what? Let's start venturing out. And so we have a goal to hopefully venture out two times a week for a couple hours. And this time we actually took you guys with us or people that were on the Instagram took you with us to these locations. We did a live um, and I thought we would share a little bit about what happened because the first location wasn't that intense. The second one wasn't really intense. There was a lot of people, but there wasn't too much right hand energy like when we go to Patsy's Pond and stuff like that. Well, Patsy's Pond, if you've been listening to any of our updates, explain I what I pulled from deep with underneath. It kind of explained why there was so much dark energy there. But uh, with this... Uh, when Jacksonville, Megan wanted to go to the supposed Civil War trails. It was more of just a uh, well. I have to look a wooden I don't, plank trail over marshland. I don't even think that I was a hundred percent on the ball in terms of like. I don't even think we were on the trail, but we basically went on this little, this little bitty like plank excursion thing. And it's originally a park, but apparently there's some Civil War trails. And I had an, a notion to go on there because on there's other Civil War trails all around here because that, I mean, that happened here. And I've been on other Civil War trails and there was some activity. So I was like, well, I didn't know we had one so close, literally like 10 minutes down the road. So let's go. The one thing right off the bat that was an interesting that like grabbed my attention is like we are pretty flat. We're coastal. We're actually below sea level. And there is these massive mounds. And this park is right next to this uh research center called Sturgeon City. And a long time ago, well not a long time ago, I think it was like the 70s or 80s, part of New River had contaminated water. And so basically they sectioned that part off and they've been testing years after years and revitalizing that area and i mean everything is good now in that area like you can actually go into the river but i remember like when i was younger they would say like don't swim a new river like it's not good to swim in like and so it's basically a research center 
and they they do like things with kids and stuff like that like science stuff and then they have like a park like walking trails the civil war trails and then the uh like a playground and like pavilions and stuff like that so the first thing we did when we walked over there was like the mounds that really made me go like well why what the heck is that because i mean there's a little slightly hilly areas here not not really but not like how those mounds were. Yeah. And so that, and it reminded me a lot of like, I don't know if you've ever seen like footage from the Civil War where like they're kind of, or not footage, you can't see footage. But <laughs> pictures. Like pictures and photos and stuff like that where they're like over the mounds with the guns, like getting ready to shoot. And that's what it reminded me of. And then the certain trees just like rubbed me the wrong way. Like I, I was like, interested in the trees i don't know why it just but the only happened. thing of consequence that happened the entire time we were there was uh the battery on the camera draining yes that was so i was like because at first we weren't gonna go live and i was like you know what i'm gonna take the the camera and test it out because we had gotten new accessories like for the cameras for investigations so i was like yeah and i made sure it was i didn't bring a backup battery but i made sure that our battery was like fully charged it was three bars and even at Patsy's Pond, we had this battery drain, but not like that. It was, I was walking and I was walking and we do have some footage. So I'm going to go back and see if like there is anything before the battery actually drained. But I got like maybe 10 minutes into the walk and then you hear Shh, goodbye and it was drained. And I didn't press a button. I didn't like to turn it off. It was 100% drained. Like, it would not turn back on. And then, yeah, so we walked, like, the little plank area. And there there was some things, like, even the spirit box was kind of, like, quiet. Uh, towards the end, there was something that came from somewhere else that was right-handed. And that was the, the thing about the two locations that we did uh, yesterday was that we were kind of like just standing in the parking lot, just kind of like figuring out where to go next. And then that's when Isaac's hands charged the right hand, the dark hand. It wasn't anything crazy, but it came from somewhere else. And all of downtown has like historic buildings. There was stuff with the civil war. Um, there was an actual settlement there, but then as hurricanes came more into the, in, into the land and like destroyed and flooded and stuff, they had to kind of like retreat back. And uh, so the next spot that we did was a house that I've been eyeing for a while. I've reached out to see if maybe we can actually like, go in and investigate. That really was going and investigating. It's yeah, no more than two rooms. Yeah, after we, after we kind of, I mean, we kind of know what's there. Anyway, so we go to this location. And it's dark, by the way. And there is, I'm just going to preference this, there is a jail that is like literally, you could see it. Like, so anything that, because I, I just automatically assumed, I didn't think I was going to get, or Isaac was going to get, like, things charging his right hand, the, the dark hand. Immediate, like, from the house itself, I thought it was going to be coming from the jail, and that's what kind of happened for a little bit. But his left hand was charging a lot, which is, like, lighter spirits, like, actual, like, spirit spirits, and uh, a lot of it inside the house. So we like walked around a couple times and then we put the spirit box on and I did the Estes method and the stuff that was coming through was crazy. Like it was a hundred percent, like there was people, there was a lot of people, like I would say easily 12 to 13 people. They were all talking at once. It was to a point where I had to kind of like pick and choose who I was going to like bring what they were saying out. They kept saying ship. They kept saying they were on a boat. And then, like, in the middle, I actually heard what sounded like a boat sinking. Like, it sounded like people talking and chattering. And then it sounded like, like, ew, like, into the water. Like, it was insane. And there was, all of a sudden, it, it turned, like, they were just trying to get their, their stuff out. And then, all of a sudden, they turned to kind of, like, panicking. And it turned me towards, like, the street area. And all of a sudden, I hear them say, oh, my God, that's the black. Well, they didn't say, like, oh, my God, but the black goat, the black goat, the black goat. And I was like, the heck? 
And then Isaac's right hand started charging. And before he pulled, I could hear my, like my third eye, my like clear audience, like that ability wise, not through the spirit box, but ability wise, I heard pray to your God. And then that's when Isaac's hand started. And the direction that I pulled it from uh, was about so 100 yards away from where we were standing in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. So we were kind of using the uh, the historical house as like a center point from all around us because it literally had the river to one side, like no more than four or five steps until you're on the basin next to the river. And then you got downtown area in all different directions. So it kind of worked like a center point. But yeah, it when you were saying the black goat, I was like, it's not a good sign. So I remember my hand charged in that direction. I pulled it. Uh, and then the spirits kind of went silent, but then they started talking from underneath water. Yeah. Yeah. Cause even before, like, it sounded like some of them were underwater and they would say like underwater and the blah, 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 like that. Um, they were kept referring to a head. I don't know if it was like an actual physical human head or like head, uh, buried was another one, like buried under was another thing that kept coming through. And ironically, I think it's not funny, but I, I find it interesting that the black goat thing said, pray to your God, when we are we were literally surrounded by different churches, like Methodist, yeah. Baptist, Catholic, uh, um, like, like literally from where we were standing on the front porch of the house, you see a Catholic church, like it's right there. So find that interesting. But the far most interesting thing is when I decided to do an area pull, pulling the entire place at once just to get all the negative energy out. When I started reaching down underneath, I started underneath this historical house, I started feeling something deeper down there. And I was like, what is that? I go farther down reaching, end up grabbing something dark, just dark energy, pulling it up. And it had the weight of an anchor. Like it, it was heavy. I remember when I pulled it up and I had it and I put it into the ring, the like the space between my shoulder blades on my back just hurt like intensely, like a muscle spasm between that, those, uh, that area. And I was that, like, that hurt like the first time in a while that I pulled something that caused me any kind of pains physically anyway. Yeah. And, and like we said before, the black goat thing was like the main thing that kind of like came at us, yeah. but everything else was kind of like, I would say like not residual, obviously not residual, but like, like obviously what you would expect dark energy to be like from a jail. Yeah. You know? And it's like our main jail, so yeah. Good good probably a good guess to think of me some people have died in there. Yeah. 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 And it's it's also the courthouse, so no telling what kind of like negative just muck is kind of like surrounding that. So but I mean it was a good investigation. It was I mean it wasn't a, like a full fledged investigation. We just basically are doing mini investigations to see if it's worth like really contacting and and pushing to do a bigger investigation. So look forward to more haunted updates. Yeah, because we're going to start doing that. We're actually hopefully going out again. Uh stay tuned to our Instagram because this time I'm going to post ahead of time if we're going to do a live. So I guess into today's episode. Yes. So today's episode, like we said, was the pyramids. We're going to split this into two parts because I, I'm pretty sure it would have been at least over an hour and a half if we were to do two parts because the second part is very, very in-depth. So the first part is basically just like talking about the different pyramids. I have a couple like haunted stories about the different ones, like obviously the main main place that you think of when you hear like pyramids is Egypt. Um, there's some stories about that, about paranormal activity that kind of hones around that and kind of we'll talk a little bit about our theories and then the part two is going to go into more of like the alien theories, what other people have said, like for instance, Dolores Cannon, her take, um, through her sessions on the pyramids are very, very interesting. Um, even raw law of one, like what they say about the pyramids more as to why are pyramids thought of to be like healing centers like all of those theories including like about um like how they built them Mm. because you got to think multiple different places multiple different cultures and different time periods built these things what Uh, is a pyramid it is a geometrical shape with four sides yeah 
and a five fifth side on the bottom. Yeah. If you want to be technical about it. The pyramids of Giza or Giza. I don't know how you pronounce it. Giza. I've never heard anyone say Giza. I've always said Giza. Yeah, I heard Giza too. That's what feels comfortable. So I'm going to go with that. So there are some urban legends with the pyramid of Giza, and they're kind of the traditional like ones that you see in like Egypt. But there are some urban legends that focus around this pyramid. And the first thing is the urban or the myth. Or well, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't call it a myth. I think it, it's very true in its thing. And it goes back to curses, kind of like what we talked about in the previous episodes, where we talked about the Iron Gate at that one location, Seven Gables Road, where if you cross it, it's cursed, and we went into the whole like idea of curses. But this one is called The Curse of the Pharaohs, and it basically is, according to legend, anybody that disturbs the tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh will be cursed and suffer a terrible fate. The curse was said to have been inscripted on the walls of King... Lord knows. Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. Oh, you say it like, like uh, aztec Do they kind of have the same language? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Tomb, and many people believe that in the early deaths of... Or that... Early deaths of several people involved in the tomb's discovery um, was the result of the curse. The idea, have you ever seen like on TikTok and stuff when they're opening like someone's tomb, like the archaeologists, and they're like, oh no, bad stuff is about to go down. I just hear the line from the mummy. It's the curse. Beware the curse. It, well, when you think about it, and it makes you think about like, okay, so, and and this is going to be like talked about more in part two, but like the power that these pyramids have because anybody can disturb a grave and have some kind of consequence to the to it but like what's specifically about the people that are in the pyramids yes the royalty they're you know known as high high up people in like different cultures but what you know what i mean like why mm -hmm. so another thing that apparently with the pyramids of giza that are is paranormal based is people believe the ghost of Khufu um, haunt the pyramids. Khufu was the pharaoh who commissioned the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is, of course, the largest and pretty much the most famous pyramid in Egypt. Um, Amongst the three. Yep. According to legend, his ghost haunts the pyramid to this day, protecting the treasures and secrets buried within. I know one theory, too, that was kind of, like, popping around when I was researching was that they actually have, like, ancient talismans, obviously, amulets and stuff like that, but, like, that hold specific powers and that us as humans in this time period would not be able to comprehend, which then kind of goes back into the alien thing, because that's... Anyways, I'll save that for part two. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I feel it. <laughs> feel it. And then another urban legend that's surrounded with this, these pyramids, is the mummy's curse, which is similar to the curse of the pharaohs. This legend holds that anyone who disturbs a mummy's tomb would be cursed with bad luck, illness, and death. This curse has been attached to many different pyramids and tombs throughout history. But, yeah. And then this one was interesting. I did not know about this one. Like, I kind of knew about the curse because, like, I think for the most part, you growing up anybody really in any part of the world knows if you mess with tombs or if you take something from the pyramid or something like that that your ass is going to be cursed you're going to have some bad juju but i didn't know like there were specific ghost stories associated with the pyramids itself um but it makes sense there was apparently a myth or an urban legend of this thing called the faceless man uh legend has it that a faceless man haunts the step pyramid of dozer which is the oldest pyramid in egypt some believe that his ghostly figure is the spirit of imhotep the architect who designed that specific pyramid so uh the faceless man they believe haunts the pyramid of dozer dozer joser joser the lost pyramid which is basically pyramids that have been lost to time in the desert that have eventually sunk in beneath the sand, and some still believe that the pharaohs haunt the desert area where these lost pyramids are, 
and obviously because they don't have final resting spots. So that's kind of like the paranormal activity that surrounds pyramids of Giza and and the Egyptian pyramids. Obviously, people have seen crazy things in terms of like disembodied voices and uh, feelings. And because I know I would imagine the pyramids to feel like very intense, uh, irregardless, just because of the tombs and stuff like that. If you take away like all of the like mystical powers that is said that pyramids have and like all of that stuff, I feel like pyramids itself in general, because wasn't limestone like also incorporated in the building of the pyramids yes so limestone from previous stuff that we've found out obviously is also a conductor of paranormal activity so if you got this big massive thing and it's not even it's kind of crazy when you start digging into pyramids itself because there's even places that aren't like they don't have this spiritual significance of a pyramids like the pyramids in egypt or even the ones that are in uh like mexico from the Mayans and the Aztecs, but like just buildings that are shaped like pyramids have some paranormal activity. I think there's a place in like Vegas or um, definitely in like Utah, Vegas, Nevada, like that area that there's a building that's a pyramid and has paranormal activity linked to it. So I think it's very interesting, the significance of a pyramid. Which is interesting that people consider Egypt one of the oldest civilization in the world oldest civilizations in the world when really necessarily they're not the mesopotamians were older than the egyptians mm-hmm. which you go back about three thousand years before recorded time and it's their dynasty and stuff like that and the egyptians kind of ruled about 1500 to 1600 years prior to bc yeah yeah which that kind of leads me into the different or around the same time but all i know i'll remember is the mesopotamia is a lot older than egypt yeah yeah which this Which kind of leads me to my next thing about, like, the different types of pyramids. Because in part two of the pyramid episode, we start talking about theories. Like, okay, different cultures around the world. It's not like they could go online and see a picture. Oh, this civilization built a pyramid. Let's try and recreate it. So how did all of these, this structure building get to all these different cultures? So Mesoamerican uh, pyramids, the ancient Maya and Aztec cultures of Mexico and Central America, they built pyramids as part of religious and cultural practices. Um, Some of the most famous ones that you guys probably know is the Pyramid of the Sun, Pyramid of the Moon in uh, Teclocan, Mexico, and Temple of Inscriptions in Palenque, Mexico. And then apparently the ancient Nubians, which is a civilization that existed in what is now Sudan, they built a series of pyramids that are similar to style of the Egyptian pyramids, and but they're smaller and they're more sharply angled. And those were built for tombs for the kings and queens of the um, Nubian civil- civilization. Chinese cultures... Uh, not cultures, civilizations, uh, they had pyramids as well. Um, there was a series of pyramids that dated back to the Han Dynasty in China, which was about two, uh, 206 BC to 220 CE. Uh, the Chinese pyramids were smaller in shape, but similar to the Egyptian ones, but they used rammed earth and clay. Rammed earth and clay. Even Europe had some sort of pyramid. A pyramid of Sentius, which was in Rome, Italy, and was built in 12 BC as a tomb for the Roman magistrate. And then the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, which was considered to be the largest in the world. That was in what is known now as Bosnia. And then the Sudanese Pyramids, which is back, dated back to 300 BCE to 350 CE which were smaller and more steeply angled and used as tombs for the kingdom of the Kush. So I find that super, super, super like interesting that all of those cultures had something. But I'm going to talk about this specific, because when you look at pyramids, there is literally a lengthy list. And for whatever reason, like paranormal activity is kind of like tucked away. Um, you have to kind of dig a little bit to get paranormal activity even though when you look up haunted like haunted locations in Egypt, the pyramids pop up. So I think that's kind of interesting. 
Mm. But there is a pyramid in Peru, right? And this is on the tour in Peru.com page. It's a blog that like promotes like Peruvian like travel and stuff like that. It is called Tucome, right? And the Sican culture, which was a pre Columbian civilization that flourished in the region from 750 to 1375 AD, the site itself contained 26 pyramids that were over 100 feet tall. And um, in 1987, they found the site of the tomb that was the Lord of Saipan, right? So it's in the area of Lambaque, I think is how you would say it, which is on the coastline of Peru. Mm. And it is surrounded by fertile farmland. And it's, and most people, most people would say that it's probably a natural, because it looks very like it was naturally structured. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look like the pyramids where you got like desert and then bam, the pyramids. Like it looks like a mountain esque type thing just chilling along that grew in with like the nature right but apparently the whole area has more than 200 pyramids like that whole chunk of area but the fact that the way the pyramids are and were strategically placed is what makes people believe that it's a pyramid and not a natural structure that makes sense in 16th century the spanish they took basically control over the pyramids when the when the Spanish took over, they basically used the pyramids to put fear into the locals. So the locals always thought the pyramids were like something funky, mm-hmm. right? But the Spanish would actually, basically, if you wouldn't convert to Christianity, they take people up to the top of the pyramids and execute them. And then on top of that, too, they would do like bonfires and play like well, not play weird sounds. They obviously couldn't play weird sounds, but make it seem like something crazy is going up on there. And it would like freak the locals out to even go there. Like, oh my God, it's cursed. We don't want to do anything. And they would use that as a scare tactic. Like if, if you don't convert, you're going to have to go. It's literally, it's literally the portal to hell. Like, well, they probably didn't say portal to hell. They probably said it in a time period accurate way, but basically made the locals and people even to this day kind of fear the pyramids but there's a reason for that because apparently apparently peru in that area had especially tucome like that that area that it's in has the highest concentration of practicing witches and like witch doctors medicine man and all of that well not all people that practice that kind of stuff are bad and dark, but not in this region. Apparently, like, 75% of the people that practice are into black magic. Like, to the point where it became an issue, like, government-wise. Like, it was an issue. Like, they had to uh, assemble, like, a team. Well, not a team at the time. Like, a grouping of people to go and, and deal with it. But apparently, there were some healers that, like like, worked with the pyramids or whatever, but Majority of the people practice back magic. There was an archaeologist. He was Norwegian. And his name was Thor Hagerdell. And he basically wanted to excavate the pyramids. Apparently, when he got there, he had a hard time finding anybody that remotely wanted to do that. And uh, he even tried to get on the good side of the people that were practicing the black magic. It that didn't go well for him at all. Um, they they somewhere were kind of buying what he was doing, but then at the same time it wasn't. Um, he said when he was like excavating or starting to, anyways, there was like slaughtered animal carcasses everywhere. There was just like really bad stuff going on. And then he said he even had where he would go to sleep and he would have a specific person basically watch over the the area. And the one guy, he had this one guy watching over the area and he actually got physically assaulted by the black magic practice, practicers, practitioners, whatever you want to say. Mm. But there is a couple urban legends that focus around Tacoma that's even darker. So basically, these set of pyramids are known for having like people practice black magic around, do some funky stuff. Um, but there is a, a an urban legend that kind of goes back to the whole like magic thing. The apparition urban legend is called the Dama de la Noche, which is Lady of the Night. I feel like every location has like a Lady of the Night urban legend. <laughs> Anyways, 
But uh, this one was a powerful source, sorceress who lived in Tukome during the time of the Sinkan civilization. She was said to be so beautiful men would lose their minds. Some say that she was executed by the Sinkan rulers for her powers, while others claim she just disappeared and never came back. And then apparently there is an urban legend, too, that, like, there's hidden treasure. I feel like, for the most part, in every, like, kind of, like, pyramid thing, there's kind of, like, especially the Egyptian pyramids, Anyone that finds a treasure or takes a treasure cursed, like, there there we go, back to the cursed things. Another urban legend or story was that there was a group of priests that basically hid inside the pyramids during the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. Uh, the priests survived in the pyramid for many years, growing their own food and relying on secret underground tunnels, which a lot of the pyramids had um, everywhere, not just um, in Tukome, but... Uh, eventually they were discovered and they were killed and then other stories say that they actually escaped after everything and then one last uh, legend is that for this area is the construction of the pyramids themselves so according to urban legends the Sinkin rulers were able to build pyramids using a special magical potion that allowed them to move massive blocks of adobe 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 Adobe. Yeah. Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe. Okay, there you go. I'm going to say Adobe. Uh, without the <laughs> the use of human or animal labor, labor. Some say the potion was created by La Dama de la Noche, while others said it was passed down generation after generation by sinking rulers. And that's the thing that's so insane about the pyramids is that not only, like, there is theories that they believe that basically the, the pyramids hold a lot of scriptures and writings and things like that about advancements for human nature like human humankind and that it's it's buried in these pyramids and it's kind of interesting well there's theories i have about that but we're saving that for part two part two yeah um and then of course going on to another pyramid that we kind of tiptoed around is the pyramid of the sun and tequicon in mexico Spirit, they believe that paranormal activity wise, that spirits of ancient priests or warriors who were buried there haunt the area. Um, people have uh, reported hearing strange noises, seeing apparitions, and feeling a sense of uneasiness in the pyramids. And you know what's another thing? I find it interesting that a lot of the pyramids, like when you see the pyramids, you kind of are taken aback by it. Like, whoa, we, like, you automatically know not to mess with them. And I find that very, very interesting. Like even like for me, I feel like obviously the Egyptian ones. I don't know anyone. Any, I wouldn't touch anything in a pyramid. Specifically, like the Egyptian ones, and then specific like I would say the Mex the the ones that are in Mexico scare me more than the ones that are in Egypt. Not scare me, but like, girl, you well, better be in, on your best behavior. Like <laughs> the ones in Mexico have a more say insidious reason for existing, but. Ones in Egypt were, were more considered tombs, as the mm-hmm. ones in Mexico were more considered sites for rituals. Yeah. Right? So this is Me where they're making human sacrifices and stuff like that. So yeah. there's a lot of blood spilt on those pyramids. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I feel like, yeah, that would make sense because, like, the ones in Egypt are more like tombs when the ones in, yeah, had they, they've reported seeing, I, I know I've read an article, too, about, like, how they were seeing people walk up on the thing. But the one thing that I want to talk about is, wasn't there a period, there is a pyramid in Mexico where, or a TikTok video of a woman that was visiting in Mexico, the pyramids, and she was like, something funky happened to her, right? Are you talking about that woman who climbed the pyramid? Yeah, I remember the pyramid in Mexico and she started like, almost like slithering like a snake, like it was like a funky. No. I'm talking about the woman who climbed the pyramid, who was from Spain. That was an a hole who shouldn't have done it in the first place, and people were booing at her and throwing shit at her. Oh well, there was there was <laughs> one there was one where she was. I think it was. Like, you were talking about? I never heard about. Yeah, you didn't see that one. No, I bet you it was the same one. You just don't remember. No, I remember. It was, anyway, she climbed yeah. the pyramid in 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 uh, Tuxtepec area, uh, Yucatan, Yucatan area, mm-hmm. and uh, she she got up there and everyone started booing at her and she got arrested no this one <laughs> this one was the same same kind of principle but she was like slithering up there like because it, i think it was like um dedicated to like a serpent guard or something like that something like that 
And she was like, You're talking about a cuckoo gun? Yeah. Yes. And she was like, sl- as she was getting, like, she was fine. And then she was getting to a certain point and she started sl- like, like a snake like slithering up there. Like, it's bizarre. It's a bizarre video. Mm-hmm. But, but that's what I mean. Like, the whole cursing thing. You could go to any haunted location, any haunted spot, and you don't get cursed. But why is certain things able to curse you? Like, obviously, the pyramids, right? Is it because, like, people actually worship the pyramids to a degree? Like, it was a dedication to the god, like, specific gods or specific pharaohs or whatever? You know what I'm saying? And it makes you really question, which all those theories, we're going to go into part two. But um, I definitely wanted to talk about, too, like, the paranormal activity because I think that's interesting. Because something that has such significance... Like I said, like when you hear about the pyramid, like I would be on my best behavior. I wouldn't do anything out of line at a pyramid. So it's just ironic that like, not ironic, but interesting that it automatically, I've never been to a pyramid. I never did anything, but I know not to to mess anything up. Yeah. But stories around places, stuff like that, create more of a lore versus actual happenings. But then again, how many so far so far cases or stories about paranormal activity happening around pyramids i don't know i mean like they there's like articles about how it seems like it's almost like residual stuff more so than like like i've never heard of a demonic thing being at a pyramid you know what i'm saying well not like i don't want to say there's not energy there it has to be for that for stuff like that for just you all the lore behind them but I don't know if anyone of the psychic nature has even been allowed around them. But then again, even even now, if you wanted to go visit them, you can get relatively close. Like you can't climb them, but you can touch them. And I'm surprised there's been those stories, maybe in our theories episode, of psychics going near the pyramid and having visions or something. No, I don't think there really. I don't think there really has been. You really don't hear too much about like, because I know like I would be intrigued to go visit the. Uh, the the like pyramids but like i know there would probably be a lot of energy i I, i'm thinking it's uh, mainly residual stuff because you got to think a lot of the people that probably like died there were protecting the tomb you know what i mean protecting the jewelry and and the amulets and stuff like that so even after they die they probably are still protecting you know what i mean like almost like um like a a ghost that maybe is a military guy that died in battle is still kind of patrolling. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. So I think a lot of it's residual because I think like, for instance, like in, in Mexico, when they're seeing the people walk, the warriors and the priests and and stuff like that, I think that's more residual of like what they did back then. You know what I mean? Now the, the Tukome pyramid, that's a little bit different because I feel like, there is black magic there. There's normally, like, in black magic, anyways, from the research I've done, there's, like, necromancing and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if it's more... Now, those pyramids might be more, less residual and more, like, intent things there. I would be curious to kind of find out. Did you go to Tukome? I would. Oh, well, yeah. I would be... But... Mm. I don't know, because remember your dad was, like, talking about, like, the witchcraft in Mexico? I bet you the witchcraft down there, especially the practicing generation <laughs> after chapter, generation. Mm. Freaky stuff. Um, I just say, come at me, bro. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. But, yeah, so it'd be interesting. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much it as, as far as paranormal activity. Now, I've not, I've seen people go in there and say, like, they felt being, like, watched and, and followed and stuff. But I've never seen, like, an actual paranormal team try and investigate. And this probably won't be just because of the significance of, like, ritual purposes and ceremonial and, and the significance that they have to the people in that region. Even though it was ancient civilizations. But I don't think... I Like, I, I don't... I To investigate, like, the Mexican pyramids, like, the pyramids in Mexico. Like, I wouldn't... Because you, you can't really go in them. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to touch... Them. But you could be in the land, like on the land that it's 
on. So I wonder what that would do. But we'll find out one day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it for this episode. Kind of diving into the different pyramids and the paranormal activity part that is serviced around them. Uh, when are we doing part two? When is that coming? So part two is actually going to come out on Monday. Okay. So you guys will have that. And it will definitely be coming out on Monday. So you guys will have um the theory. So you don't have to wait too long. You'll have the theories and deep dive into uh possibly why the pyramids have so much energy. And we'll, like I said, dive into like what Dolores Cannon said, what the Rollo of One kind of said, any kind of like people that have channeled through like the pyramid energy. I'll tell you from my point of view, I remote viewed and... I don't get now. I didn't remote view to the Tukome one because I was kind of like given a warning shot not to. So, yeah, but I don't. I don't see anything. I I don't see anything. You know what it reminds me of? You know when you see somebody that not inspires you, but you see somebody that has accomplished a lot and is is is. Like, you look, not look up to, but you're like, oh, wow, this person is really, whew, right? That's what it feels like if I try and remote view into, like, the pyramid areas. Like, I can. It won't let me go inside it. That's a, that's a tricky part. That's the weird part. Um, But I've had dreams in the past where it seemed like I was inside pyramids. But I don't know if I actually was. So, that's my little take on the remote viewing process. So. Yeah. I don't know. Pyramids are just kind of, I don't know. Like I, 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 I don't, and I don't feel the need to press further either. So, but yes, look forward to part two coming out Monday. And if you care to check out our, if it, when we investigate, mm-hmm. uh, you can uh, tune into. I think it's our hidden shadows on Instagram or no TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, yeah. Right? We're probably gonna do TikTok and Instagram because we have yeah because they're nah, both right? TikTok. yeah. Um, but the thing is too, one thing that we do want to start doing is I, I want to start going live and stuff from the shadow walker because that's technically the paranormal team and where we investigate from, mm. you know? So, but we don't have like, for instance, we have more followers and more uh, people that we engage with on a daily basis on hidden in the shadows. So if you're not following us there on Shadow Walker, make sure to follow and we'll eventually shift over and just go live from Shadow Walker. But as always, you can catch our social medias at Hidden the Shadows uh, on uh, podcast on Instagram, Hidden the Shot 6 on Twitter, Hidden the Podcast 2 on TikTok, or links to all our social media and always you can listen to us at Hidden the Shadows Podcast.com. Uh, but as always, we'll catch your weirdos in the next one. Yup.